What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, January 18th, 2018. 1 18 18. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the busiest lady in the business, Andrea Renee. What's good, Greg? Games. That's right. I gotta get. I'm, I'm almost there where it's gonna be second nature because there was that moment I knew it was coming. What did the kids say to say? He said games. I'll say games from now on. How are you? I'm doing well. How's the week treat you? I haven't I haven't seen you since Tuesday. It's been very busy. Um, the What's Good crew has been in town. We've mm -hmm. been shooting some fun videos, um, doing some cool stuff. How long are they here for? Um, they left. Oh, they're shipped out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what I've been doing all week up sure. until today. Of course. You got to yeah. stockpile the content when they're all around. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Hit well, it. we've all got a lot of travel next month. Mm, so mm. had to get down. ahead of the game. Yeah, exactly. Smart. Yeah. That's thinking smart. Planning. Right you been playing anything good? Um, I actually haven't picked up my controller to play anything in like a week. Working too hard. I understand. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Got to yeah. play something tonight. Tonight's the night. I'm super stoked because oh, I just got a video game that's not out yet, but it's embargo and I can't tell you what it is. However, maybe it's the one that I got. Pro I would assume Ooh, probably. Maybe right? I'll draw. No, then they'll <laughs> see fine. that too. Uh, but anyways, uh, Nick, Tim and Andy are all leaving right now. And so then this afternoon, I just have one call and then it's kind of free. And then tomorrow afternoon, kind of free. So I'm just going to sit at my desk and play the game and mm. actually do, do the thing we never get to do here, which is play the games for work that we expect to talk about at work. I mean, it's like th that's like the dream scenario know, right? that everyone yeah. thinks we do, but we don't actually do. Right. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just Google Drive and checklists and talking to Kevin and our, oh, Comcast is coming today too. Don't forget. Sorry about all the troubles we've been having. We've been on Comcast about it. They're out here today. Apparently, we'll see. Gotta get happens. you on that fiber. Also, don't forget <sighs> the Monster it. Hunter World <sighs> Beta is this weekend. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna play. No, why I, not? It's not? Not because I'm against it. I'm going to Montreal uh, Saturday morning. Oh yes, you told me this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you go to the eShop yet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get that Blossom game, that Blossom Tales or whatever. The Zelda-like game. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games <laughs> Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about before jumping into your questions, comments, concerns, special segments, bad PSN names, and everything else that you submit at kindoffunny.com slash kfgd. Remember, it's just a Google form. Come on over. Be part of the show. kindoffunny.com slash kfgd. Then we record the show live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, but we don't look at the chat while we do it. If you watch live, your duty is to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight. For everybody listening later on podcast services around the globe or watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Today... The show is brought to you by Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Patreon, of course, keeps the mics on for us at Kind of Funny. And right now, if you went over and chipped in just a buck, you'd get access, a whole week of exclusive access to party mode. And when I say party mode, I mean the best party mode that's ever gone up. We're all very, very, uh, very, very proud of it. Not even doing the sales bullshit about it, because I know we ask for your money all the time. This is one, if you've ever thought about supporting us on Patreon, if you've enjoyed what we've been doing recently with the changes we've made or how where, where the shows are and all that stuff, it would mean a lot if you went over there and I think this one's worth the buck just for a month to see what it's all about. But I digress. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. When you rotated and started sleepily rubbing your eye, I was like, oh, this isn't going to be a good Kevin Roper Report jingle. Was it bad? Five items on the no, Roper Report. No, it was, it was good. Five items on the Roper Report. Oh, the you tired dozen. little slug. Oh, come on, Kevin. You can do <laughs> better than that. I boo you, sir. <laughs> this is a terrible showing for you today, Kevin. For so you didn't like the jingle then? I was just saying it was a tired jingle. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to let you know. I got to be honest. You know? This kid over here. Can't, Telling it like it is. Don't give, I can't, uh, that's what people expect. Authenticity, Kevin. They can't, I can't come up here and fake it for you. Number one on the Roper Report. Nintendo Labo. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to hear your opinions on this. Oh, thing. I bet you can. Uh, I'm going to read from Nintendo's press release about Nintendo Labo for people who didn't see the presentation yesterday or the, I guess the video. They dropped this video basically showing this new thing, an interactive experience for kids and kids at heart that involve you building some cardboard stuff, putting your Switch parts into it and having pianos and robots and all sorts of stuff. Here we go. With each Nintendo Labo kit, kids can transform modular sheets of cardboard specifically designed to interact with the Nintendo Switch console and Joy-Con controllers into creations called Toy-Con. 
From a piano to a motorbike, a robot and more, each Toy-Con comes to life when combined with Nintendo Switch in different ways. As you build, you will have fun discovering how the technology works and might even invent new ways to play with each Toy-Con. For example, you can build a functioning 13-key piano that brings your musical creations to life once the Nintendo Switch console and right Joy-Con controller are inserted. As you play, the IR motion camera in the right Joy-Con detects which keys are pressed and translates them into unique notes that are heard through the console. You can even take control of your very own motorbike by constructing a functioning set of handlebars with a Joy-Con inserted in each side and the Nintendo Switch console cradled in the middle. Simply hit the ignition button, turn the right handle to engage, and the accelerate, I'm sorry, engage the accelerator and watch your adventure unfold on the Nintendo Switch screen as you race to new destinations. Nintendo Labo launches on April 20th with two two kits, the variety kit and the robot kit. With a variety kit, you can create many different Toy-Con, including two Toy-Con RC cars, a Toy-Con fishing rod, and a Toy-Con house, a Toy-Con motorbike, and a Toy-Con piano. With the robot kit, you can build an interactive robot suit with a visor, backpack, and straps for your hands and feet, which you can then wear to assume control of a giant in-game robot. Both kits include everything you need to assemble your Toy-Con creations, including the building materials and relevant Nintendo Switch software. The variety kit will be available at a suggested retail price of $69.99, and the robot kit will be available at a suggested retail price of $79.99. A special customization set that includes fun stencils, stickers, and colored tape will also be available to purchase on April 20th at a suggested price of $9.99. I have not talked to you about this. I have not seen your reactions to this. Andrea, Nintendo Labo Go. I think my first impressions are looks neat. Definitely something geared towards younger children. Sure. Um, in the and testing, kids at heart. yes, the testing labs that they are doing, they are geared towards kids six to twelve, uh-huh. uh, which seems correct. Old enough to know how to build it and to be able to customize it and have fun without like hurting themselves, um, but not too old where they're like, "This is stupid." I hate this. Let's go smoke pot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or that I guess. <laughs> is that, um, that's what like thirteen year olds do, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Kevin says no. 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 Um, if you're 13, you don't smoke pot. Here's my problem. Here with we this. go. Lay the problem on me, Andrew Renee. I like the imagination part of it. Sure. I like the idea that we're going to take a really cool piece of tech and marry it with something that is just like really easy to make into a toy. I don't like how expensive it is. Mm. I think the idea of seventy dollars for essentially a build a box, right? Yeah is kind of outrageous. Mm. Now, if there was some kind of integrated tech into the boxes, then maybe, but, and I know people would be like, oh, well the software like comes with it. It's a whole package deal. We haven't seen exactly how robust this software is. I mean, if these are just like mini games, I don't know how I feel about this. The, The real concern I have, especially when they're gearing it towards younger children is its durability. I uh, mentioned 100%. this on, on Twitter yesterday. If you're paying $80, $70, whatever for a toy, you expect it to last more than one play session. Sure. I'm assuming every parent out there expects it to last for more than one play session. Now, can these pieces of cardboard, I know they do look corrugated and they look like thicker pieces of cardboard, last for multiple play sessions and how long are they going to last? I mean, the... Robot kit is the same price as a pro controller, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? So like I think about if I have a Nintendo switch, what am I going to get more use out of? Would I rather spend my 79 99 on a pro controller that I can use with all of my games on Nintendo? Or do I want to buy this robot backpack that I can use only with this one game and that's it? Sure. I think obviously that comes down to what your personal budget is and you know how much you feel it's going to be worth your time. We need to get some hands-on time with this to really get a feel for if these things work the way that they're intended to work. Yeah. Ma- Nintendo does a great job with innovating really magical experiences like this, but sometimes they don't follow through with execution to make good on the promise of what this trailer is saying it's going to and be like. And how long it'll be around, yeah, and what happens Correct. with it, yeah. I, my Nintendo Labo uh, reaction right upon watching that video is I thought it looks awesome, and I can totally see kids getting super into this and being crazy about it. I was talking about it yesterday on the Gamescast. It's going to be live on Patreon tomorrow and live on YouTube and podcast services on monday the fact that when i was playing south park the stick or i'm sorry the fractured but whole i remember turning to jen and being like 
I never thought about using Amazon boxes and cardboard the way the kids in this game do in terms of like building forts and having this and I'm like, you know, the coons layer and all this stuff. I'm like, when we have kids, I'm totally going to be that dad that like tries to build all this stuff with duct tape and markers and make it all happen. Well, we didn't have boxes when we were kids, Craig. Because we had no- broken glass and we walked Because bit, nobody was uphill. buying anything on the internet. Exactly, exactly. But this, and, but this is, that was such a glimpse to me of like, oh wow, like, that's awesome and kids really must dig that if they use that or you know however they want to play with it and so to see this come to light it was like that oh man like first off what a brilliant idea in terms of hey here's a great way for kids and parents to bond together because it's like what i saw one report that's like two hours to build some of this stuff so to sit there and make it at the table i always like uh blair and jessica right with their son on instagram they're always putting up like blair making lego sets with him and like i mean it's always like oh that's a really cool like father son you know family son nerd nerdy thing that i wouldn't think about building whereas this is the same thing of all right let's assemble let's build this robot pack and put you into the game and have you punch and do all this different stuff on top of that i thought the trailer did a really good job of showing it wasn't just the amazon box i already have at home right it is a thicker cardboard they're like in the robot pack in particular like right they in they, they did a thing where they pulled off the back and you saw like strings and movement like it's it's a complicated system in there that isn't just you're you're paying 70 bucks for cardboard right and you're putting it on and that's the end of it it's designed cardboard right. but still but i think your points still totally stand of my concern is yeah what about when I, you know, somebody spills juice or coffee or the kids are playing in the playroom and they fall over and they smoosh the piano or they smoosh just the visor. And it's like, are, I'm assuming they're just shit out of luck, right? The, the answer, if you want to keep doing that, is to go buy the next, go buy the exact same set you have and have duplicates. I don't think they're going to be selling piecemeal cardboard sheets around there of like, hey, here's a replacement. But maybe online they would, but I sincerely doubt it. Yeah, it would be smart of them to be able to offer cardboard replacements if you already have the software codes at a mm-hmm. discounted mm-hmm. price, especially since their cost to make it can't possibly be that expensive. Sure. The margins have to be very good. You think so? But I mean, I don't know if that's part of their plan because that means like another SKU that they have to put into their system more marketing materials, more shelf space somewhere. And that's the big thing too of like how much shelf space does a retailer have for this stuff? That's always been the problem when you look oh, at Toys Oh, if they can fit Rock Band 4 somewhere, I'm sure they can fit Nintendo Labo. I like it a lot. I think it's really cool. I think it's a really cool idea. It was awesome. You know, we're at that age where our peers now have children, right, that are, they're playing games with. And the parent reaction to this last night, I thought, was super positive in terms yeah. of everybody I know who have kids who like games or like just, you know, are nerds with them. It was like, oh, my God, this is going to be awesome. And, yeah. you know, Jen and I just had our friend and their kids over a couple weekends ago and everybody was playing video games and we were sitting around and they were playing Odyssey and we were all just talking. I can totally see them being like, yeah, let's put on this robot suit and d- go. But then I can see it as what is the life of that? How long are they playing it? Is it? You're paying 80 bucks for this robot kit and it is a two Saturday thing these kids care about and then it's over. And is that an, what's the cost that that cost benefit is different for every parent, every family. So it doesn't even matter. But then it is is Nintendo supporting it. And how do they do this? There's a lot of questions to it, but the idea itself is pretty cool. I like that Nintendo feels confident enough right now to be weird again. I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, they went weird too many times before when they weren't there. And now they have a system that is a big <laughs> success and has already attracted the hardcore audience. And now, hey, hardcore audience, we like I thought it was interesting. I think it was I think it was Eric Pope. It might have been Nick Chester. I might have, I think it might have been Nick, actually. But obviously having kids having a switch and like talking about how they have their own. The parents have their own joy cons that they've like hidden on a top shelf so that the kids can get all the other ones sticky and gross. And it's like I never thought about sharing a console with a child and then having it be a system that is. I'm playing it and I have this like meticulous Mario save or Zelda save and then the kids are over there and they're playing snipper clips or one two switch or just screwing around in Mario Kart. Like that's a fascinating thing. And I think this is a cool way of bridging that gap and using the switch in a way that speaks to a younger audience but doesn't necessarily alienate adults. Yeah, I don't know if the software that they're going to be shipping with the buildable toys is going to appeal to adults as much as oh, it does I, to, I as much as it, it does to kids um, except the piano i i made this i want to get the piano and i want to try to get good enough at it that i can play a song during kind of funny prom and have people slow dance to my piano you might want something with a few more keys i don't want i, I, I don't want to be intimidated all right <laughs> i don't care if it's just heart and soul just ding 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 <laughs> You would have to play that a long time to make it for a full slow dance. Well, you know what? You gotta be like minimum two minutes. I'll sing it too. I'll sing. All right. I'll, I'll fill it in. All right. You cool. guys, we I've got, got it. committed We're now. We're assembling. 
Um, are we going to hear from the flannel death? We are going to hear from the flannel death. I just didn't know if you had anything else to say there. Well, I wanted to bring up Mike Drucker's tweet, but I didn't Ooh. know if I should do that before or after. I feel like after would make okay. more sense. The flannel death wrote into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD just like you can and should and says, Greg and Andrea. Yesterday, Nintendo Labo was revealed and the world seemed pretty divisive on the internet. But I'm not here to talk about whether people liked it or not. I'm here to ask what this means for third parties. In my opinion, Nintendo Labo is the next evolution of Toys to Life, and I'm wondering if this is something third parties chase after and copy, or if it's something third parties would be willing to collaborate with Nintendo on and make third party toy cons. In particular, it screams Ubisoft to me for some reason with their recent collaboration on Mario plus Rabbids. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Thoughts? Thanks for all you do, Mara. Right? Mara? I always screw it up one way or the other, and now I'm, I'm stuck. But we don't know, because the A-R-A names can go either way. Well, they, but they wrote in, and the problem is that I think I used to say Mara because of a, a girl I went to school with, but I mm-hmm. think they might have written in and said it was Mara. So from now on, you're just the flannel death. Yes. That's your, that's your username. You wrote it in. That's who you are, flannel death. Before I address the third-party issue... Um, It certainly was divisive. And I wanted to bring up Mike Drucker's tweet. Of course, a friend of the show, great writer, comedian, Mike Drucker. Catch him in Um, Live 3, youtube.com slash kind of funny. Mike Drucker. He he wrote um, in about Nintendo and the adult gamer. Nintendo saying, Nintendo Labo is for kids and those that like kid stuff. Adult gamer, okay, but what if I don't want it? Nintendo, totally fine. It's for kids. Adult gamer, yes, but cardboard? Really? Not in my game room. Nintendo, it's for kids, adult gamer, but how is it for me? <laughs> and I was like, this this is perfect. Yeah. He's got 15,000 retweets and 44,000 likes on that tweet. That's how it goes. Mike Drucker, yes. comedian around the world. Watch exactly. him on some, or watch his work on Samantha B. Full frontal. Um, <laughs> so regarding the third party, I don't think third parties are going to get into this at all until they see how it does with Nintendo's first party. If it is incredibly successful, maybe we'll see some third parties dipping their toes in this yeah. cardboard pool, but I don't think so. It, 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 if Nintendo's library of IP wasn't so strong, I would say there's a then Nintendo would be reaching out. Mm-hmm. But I feel like last night or yesterday on the Gamescast, I had I was like, oh man, they should reach out to Sony and try to get Ghost. And I'm like, oh no, just do Luigi's Mansion, make a Luigi's Mansion where I'm making the backpack and I'm holding a little cardboard proton pack and I'm running around sucking up ghosts. I'm like, yep. yeah, you're goddamn right. I'll be sitting there, 35 years old, <laughs> playing that thing all by myself. It won't fit on your back, but that's okay. It's cardboard. I'll make it fit. Don't worry. <laughs> Kevin will come over. We'll get some duct tape. We'll make it fit. Um. Yeah, yeah, Ubisoft is interesting. Like, I think there are opportunities there, but I really think we're a ways away from where you expand the pool that much. If yeah. this come out and great, then obviously you need to get the Mario tie-in. You need to get probably a Zelda sword tie-in and shield kind of stuff. Like, start doing those kind of theme packed long before I think we'd ever do like, all right, now Rabbids and now Ubisoft Assassin's Creed or whatever. Somebody else who wants to bring an IP over. And I don't think now that this is done and based on who Nintendo is, I don't think this is something like Skylanders that can then be copied by Lego. I don't think you can see EA go, oh, this is a great idea. We're putting out our own cardboard game thing that goes on everything. It's on PlayStation and Xbox. It's not going to be like you draw and they're trying to get it everywhere. I feel like this is a market Nintendo's got cornered for this audience and I don't think other people are going to chase it the way they're going to. Agree. Okay. What do you think of the name? Labo. I'm wacko for Labo. That one doesn't rhyme, but I like Gabo about Labo. I think if they had left it at Nintendo Labs, it would have been better. Yeah. But. Yeah, this is one of the first Nintendo names in a while where I think I just read it and I was like, all right, cool. That's the name. And I didn't have like, I was like, we we're on the games cast and Tim was like, what does everybody think? I'm like, oh. I would be interested to hear from a native Japanese speaker mm. if what their thoughts are on the name and if it maybe has some kind of resonance for them. Gotcha. Um, because I know like when there, there was a lot of conversation about that back when Wii U was first announced and everyone being like, why, what, what's, what's Wii? Yeah. Wii U, what is this? But Shuhei Yoshida, write into my DM and tell me what you think of Lambo. <laughs> uh, number two, NPD numbers are starting to pop. We had this last week, Aaron Greenberg, we talked about his tweet on the, here where he's talking about Xbox, B PlayStation, Nintendo's still the best selling one, blah, blah, blah. Nintendo put out a giant press release talking specifically about Nintendo numbers. I'm going to read from that, but as of press time now, nobody had the whole 
top 10 charts up and all that jazz. So here we go. Uh, it confirms that Switch sold more units in December than any other video game system in the United States. 1.5 million Nintendo Switch systems during the five-week uh, reporting period of December were sold. Since its launch 10 months ago, Nintendo Switch has sold more than 4.8 million units, making it the fastest-selling home console in U.S. history. And then, from left field, Andrew Renee pops in. What's your context you want to add? So I wanted to make sure we talked about this in relationship to some other important numbers. And so this is from Business Insider. In just the last five months, from July 1st to December 3rd, the company sold over 7 million PlayStation 4 consoles, that company being Sony. Doesn't sound like a lot. Hmm. Even 2017's hottest new console, Nintendo Switch, sold just 4.7 million units in its first four months. Nintendo estimates it'll sell around 14 million Switches in its first year, while Sony's expecting to move a whopping 18 million PlayStation 4 consoles in the same amount of time. I needed to bring in this context because I think it's important to remember while Nintendo is on fire, Sony is still beating them. Mm -mm. Right? And so, like, it was interesting to me hearing that NPD confirmed Switch sold more units in December. It's important to remember that's just a single month. Sure. So in the same amount of time, from if you think about in the, since its launch, it's sold 4.8 million units. Just in the last five months, PlayStation has sold 7 million yeah. units. Yeah. So that's, and that's like, you know, 2.2 million units oh, more. Oh, yeah. No, like, no, no, no. PlayStation's that's, on fire. That's substantial. So I thought it was important to make sure that, you know, we're talking about, I would love to get some Xbox numbers to throw into this mix so we can take a, a real, real look, look at, where exactly. at where the console picture is. But yeah. yeah, what'll be interesting is the same thing you've brought up multiple times in this show, right? Is the fact that when we're comparing these numbers, it's different because we're at different points in the life cycle. You know, mm -hmm. you expect a, any console that's on the market year after year after year it should be expected to sell more and more because it's got more of a library, more reason to buy it. Whereas we've been talking about Nintendo in year one doing mm -hmm. these juggernaut numbers, right? But what does year two look like that? Not having a Mario, not having a Zelda, not knowing where Smash is or Metroid or Animal Crossing, like where the tentpole things are. Do they lose that momentum? Are they able to keep it? Was the mini January direct enough to keep people excited and on board? Or is it now we wait for E3 and what do they have at E3? All right. of those things of what it really looks like. Also important to remember the difference between U.S.-based numbers and global mm, numbers mm. as well, because clearly PlayStation has a much bigger global like footprint currently than sure. Switch does. Of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting console race. Continuing, though, with the NPD numbers from Nintendo, 3DS had its best sales month since December 2014. Collectively, the different versions of the Nintendo 3DS hardware sold more than 75 well, 750,000. God, I was talking to Tim about this yesterday. Somehow, I just forgot how to say big numbers. I screw them up all the time. <laughs> 750,000 <laughs> units in the U.S. in December, a 27% increase over the same period a year ago. The sales also pushed the Nintendo 3DS family of systems to a new milestone of more than 21 million sold in the U.S. F now, here's where we don't have the full top 10, but where Nintendo ranks in there is this. Four Nintendo Switch games finished high on the December sales charts for individual titles. Super Mario Odyssey at number three, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at number 4, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild at number 9, and Splatoon 2 at number 16. Additionally, Pokemon, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon for the Nintendo 3DS finished at number 13 and number 14, respectively. So there you go. Your giant dump. NPD numbers are coming for what's all happening in December. I'd imagine that usually what happens when these press releases start dropping in the afternoon, your IGNs and everybody else will start putting up what the top 10 games were, and we'll go from there. But so hopefully we'll have them tomorrow. But oh, and according to Xbox's Aaron Greenberg, mm -hmm. the Xbox One outsold the PS4 in yes. the U.S. in December. That which was is... the news story from last week where he tweeted that out, and that yeah. was the first hint that people were getting it. Yeah. So Xbox over PlayStation in December switched those still on top of them. I think is what. Or no, no, no. I forget. I it was the news from whatever last week. You should have watched the show. Come on. Looking at you, Zagger. <laughs> uh, anything to add? I mean, we talked about it. Nintendo's. Killing, it's going to be interesting. Let's see what happens. No, I think, I mean, yeah, I think what we just need to do is keep waiting for some big AAA announcements. Yeah. And Nintendo fans, and Tim, I'm talking to you as well. Ooh, snap. Just calm down a little bit, okay? You're, you're working yourself up. I don't want to see you, like, pop a blood vessel or anything. Hey, like, man. everyone got all up in a tizzy about this announcement, and then it was Nintendo Labs, and then you all got mad about it. Just manage your expectations a little bit. That's just all. Let, Andrea, at this point, I feel like it's just you and me. We're sitting back with our coffees watching the kids play. <laughs> let them be happy. It's been... It's no, been Greg, the Wii I don't U want was, them to be sad, though. The that's, Wii U that's, was a giant rain. Oh, they're, they're sad for a second, and then they think about playing with cardboard, and they're super happy. Just let them be. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of 
angry people on the internet about Labo. I, I, I was happy to see so many people happy about it, though. A lot of people were like, oh, that's cool. I felt like, I mean, what did they? Maybe I, you and I are looking at different parts of the internet. Probably, probably true. Well, I don't even know if I had time yesterday. I think I was just bumming around. Andre liked it from Game Explain. He was on Gamescast. Catch you tomorrow on Patreon. Anyways, number three. Here's some good news for you. I like my own headline in this. Something is happening in Resident Evil Land. Uh, Reset Era and Tim Geddes pointed all this stuff out for me. I have multiple bullet points pointing to something maybe happening. First and foremost, Capcom First Development Department's official Twitter tweeted a good morning. Just like a good morning. Hope you're having a good day. Smiley face. And it's like, that's not newsworthy, right? But they had a photo in there. In the photo in the back, in the foreground of just, it was a weird photo of like a window looking up at it. They, you had the dummy finger that we got kicked around for Resident Evil press kits sitting there. Mm -hmm. And then what looked to be the corner of a typewriter, which of course you usually save at in Resident Evil there. So people were like, what? Uh, people are freaking out. Reason to freak out, of course, is that Resident Evil 2's 20th anniversary is in three days. Then, this is all, now we're just into the, we're totally into rumors and speculation, which we like to do here. Uh, on, on Reset Era, there was the guy who works at Capcom, but does temporary VO for announcing stuff, tweeting that he just did some stuff. Some guy being like, oh, we love it when you do this. Reset Era went through his work, and it's usually that he's doing the VO uh, scratch work for Resident Evil games. Then somebody asked him if it was for the Devil May Cry stuff. He said no, it was for a different compilation, had like a winky emoji in there. So people got super excited. Then... The Resident Evil Twitter changed its profile pic to include a new Resident Evil logo. Now, here's the quote from uh, Reset Era, who are smarter about this than me. It's a new logo, but it's an updated look of the logo the series had during its first three entries. Just more worn and torn, and many people will recognize it from this specifically. And then it was the Resident Evil 2 mm. logo text there as well. And so is it all just going to lead to they're putting out Resident Evil socks? Maybe. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you something is happening with Resident Evil and you need to have your antennae up to figure it out, to figure out what's going on. Don't be surprised if there's a Resident Evil compilation, something's happening. Three days to the 20th, we'll see what happens. The 20th anniversary. You care? I mean, not particularly, but I mean, it would make sense that they're going to announce something for Switch. Sure. Ooh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Resident Evil has come to many Nintendo platforms in the past. Yeah. So... I mean, that seems like a, a good fit for them. Yeah. I just started uh, tinkering around with uh, Resident Evil on PlayStation VR again. And I was just like, God, what a fucking great game. So now I'm kind of like, oh, okay, what do you got next? What are you going to be? What's it going to be? How are you going to let me down? I'm getting hyped up now. <laughs> How I don't are even you going to let you know me I mean? down? Uh, number four for you. This is a, well, uh, on me. This is my bad. Sorry, everybody. This is a late to the party thing. Uh, there's a new Alien game coming. Variety reported on this. There was a press release about it. Yesterday, yeah. Hilariously, the press release just said, new Alien game coming. And I went, oh, well, there's a million Alien games. Thinking just an Alien. Like the, the, just some kind of alien in space. Not that it was aliens, that it was like, hey, the guys, are, and they split the, they got acid blood. Because it, it says, the the title of the press release says, Alien Game in Development from Foxnet Games. Terrible. A terrible headline. Well, because it doesn't imply that it's alien. Major like, motion picture franchise Alien has a new game coming out. 20th Century Fox, whatever yeah, exactly. you want to put, right? Yeah. yeah. So I saw, I blew past that press release, then Assembling News yesterday saw this headline somewhere else but and put it together, but for some reason I never put it on the thing, so it's late, but I just want to get it out here for you. So I'm going to read some from Variety's article for you. Foxnet Games has acquired... Yeah, has acquired game developer Cold Iron Studios, which specializes in massively multiplayer online games and is developing a shooter title set in the Alien Cinematic Universe for consoles and PCs. Cold Iron Studios was founded in 2015 by three games industry veterans. CEO Craig Zinovich, Chief Technology Officer Shannon Pozanuski and creative director Matt Hyacin. That, 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 okay, that one's more on, on the nose. The founders, <laughs> along with the rest of Cold Iron's 25 employees, are all joining Foxnet Games. The studio will remain based in San Jose, California. Game titles... Game titles, games titles members of the Cold Iron team have worked on in the past include Neverwinter, Star Trek Online, Metroid Prime 3, Bioshock Infinite, City of Heroes, Bioshock Infinite again, <laughs> Doom, and Borderlands. Fox Net, and then this is something you added, right? Yes. Fox Net, Fox Next Games' first, man, there's a lot of weird pos possessives <laughs> in this fucking article. True. First title, Marvel Strike Force, developed by Fox Net Los Angeles, was announced in late 2017. The mobile free-to-play title is a squad-based role-playing game featuring the heroes and villains of the Marvel Universe. Marvel Strike Force is slated to launch in 2018. Huh. Do you think, I'm, it's going to be a shooter. Do you think it's going to be a massive online game? 
it's very popular to do, you know, Are we, is this going to be a massively games is, multiplayer games, games <laughs> as a service alien game where I'm out there teaming up, taking on Queens and such. I'm, you know, I'm not sure. I think, you know, we kind of are collectively hesitant as gamers when it comes to the alien cinematic universe mm-hmm. in the gaming space. I think Alien Isolation was a great example of a game done well do right, in yeah. this universe. Um, but I don't know, when you bring in multiplayer and guns and you take away the survival horror part of it right, and make it more action based, that's when you I kind of go, mm, when the alien mm, franchise feels know. like it's killing it, it's when it is like you're underpowered trying to survive against these things. If this is just going to be right. like left for dead with aliens, that well, that sounds kind of cool. But if it's more like evolve with aliens, then I'm like, no, I'm good. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Good luck to you. Yeah. It's we coming. will um, have to find out. Final item on the rope report. Oh, Andrea Renee, does this one speak to you? <laughs> it really does. Seems like Paragon... <laughs> might be going away or at least getting less love because of the success of Fortnite. Uh, I'm going to read from Polygon's article. Epic Games has moved some employees off of its Paragon MOBA in order to assist on Fortnite, according to a statement made on Reddit. In an unusually candid letter to its community, a representative from Epic said that the future of Paragon was uncertain at this time. Our efforts have always been focused on growing the game, Epic said. While each of Paragon's incarnations has been beloved by a core community, none has been large enough to achieve mainstream success. This, combined with the humbling success of of Fortnite, has caused us to question if we have a good path to grow Paragon and make it thrive. Paragon has been in active development for some time and was released into early access in March 2016. Since then, it has refreshed and reinvigorated itself a number of times. The most recent changes were detailed here at Polygon last June during the E3 event in Los Angeles. Despite those changes, Epic said that the game has so far failed to achieve enough momentum. In the Reddit post, Epic went on to say that a number of Paragon team members jumped onto Fortnite to help sustain the game as it has grown far larger than anything in Epic's past. That will necessarily... That will necessarily translate into a slower release cadence of updates and improvements to that game. Over the next few weeks, Epic said, we'll be figuring out if and how we can evolve Paragon to achieve growth and success in trying some things internally. Reach for comment, Epic had nothing further to add. Ooh, Andrea Renee, big time Paragon fan, how you feeling? So this, right off the right off the bat, is is disheartening. Yeah. But not unexpected. Okay. So the game has been struggling for quite some time. Um, obviously, as the Reddit thread has mentioned, there there's a core community that's really stuck by. Yeah. You've been one game. of them, right? Yes. Um, but the problem is, is that even the core community is falling away because they keep changing so much of the meta that it's it's hard to keep up. And it's very obvious that they don't quite know what the vision is. Mm, mm. What's frustrating to me is that I've talked to some of the members of the development team on this game and they have like these long-term plans, but the plans that they've made aren't necessarily addressing the reason why they're losing players. They're gotcha. thinking about more like creative things from um, from maybe like a narrative perspective or from like a character character development perspective and not necessarily from like a moment to moment gameplay design perspective. Now, it's obvious that some of the people who worked on this game have gone to work on Fortnite. Not only has Epic admitted that, but the amount of of, of work that's been that used to be put into Baragon has clearly like slowed down quite a bit. Gotcha. Um, which isn't a bad thing. I think it's probably better for them to take more time between large patches to like really address some balancing issues because balancing a game like this is incredibly complicated. The frustrating part for me is as someone who's put, you know, 500 plus hours into this game is the idea that because this game over here is doing well, that they're just going to abandon this game. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. And Epic has enough resources that they could do both. So it's frustrating for me as a player to be to hear that, oh, well, we've got our free to play battle royale thing over here that's like doing gangbusters. So we're just going to we're just going to kick this to the See curb. you guys later. Got to go. You know, it's I like the idea that a, a publisher as big as Epic has the ability to do small and large titles. And why wouldn't they be able to? I mean, they're also working on some mobile games and doing some other things. I don't know why they would just say because it isn't doesn't have the success of Fortnite that it's going to not be as good. 
but like I get it. It just makes me angry, you know. Like <laughs> <laughs> you understand the business decision behind it, right? But you it don't just, have to like it. It's sad. It makes me sad, sure. you know, that that they haven't found it. But like, it is. I don't know. I don't know if it's fixable. I don't know if they can get to a point because clearly they look at the mobile market and they're trying to go after something like League or Dota or even a game like Smite. You know, or even something like Vainglory that has like a large international audience and they just haven't gotten there because they can't hook people. And there's a great response on the Reddit thread from uh, a Reddit user, um, Sevron, who details very like explicitly his opinion or her opinion on what they should do, what Epic should really look at as Here's like, how you can make this more successful. Let me, people let back. me help you try to fix this. Gotcha. And it, a lot of it is, is really great. I mean, starting first with making like all of the cards in the game, like accessible to everybody. Mm-hmm. Cause what's, what's difficult for new players is that they come in and generally like the reason why people are good at MOBAs is cause they spend a lot of time learning deep strategy and they get good with their skills. So they are able to not only perform like shots and things uh, and get their last hits and really get like the time timing down but like they know how all of the items interact with each of the individual heroes and what the sure. counters are and blah 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 but what ha- happens now with paragon is that epic has really kind of walled that off from news players by saying well you have to open all of these chests and you have to earn these in-game rewards in order to get the items it's not available to you mm-hmm. at launch and that's really off-putting to a lot of new players that they come in and they just get trounced by you know people in the matchmaking system it's just there's a lot of layers to the problems in Paragon, and I know that the development team knows what they are, yeah. but I don't know if they have a clear vision or path to how to fix them. That sucks. Because clearly, as Epic has said, they are focused on Fortnite right now, yeah. which also has its own slew of problems. <laughs> <laughs> this is really, it, it just makes me sad at the end of the day, Greg. I hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to make you sad today. No, it's okay, but like, I, I've had a lot of fun playing this game. Sure. And if it went away, if they stopped supporting it, it would be sad, just yeah. like a lot of the people out there have had games, you know, like yeah. online games. Marvel Heroes, rest in peace. Right? Like that that go away. But I mean, it happens. If it's you gone, it's gone. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I mean, it, for me as an outsider, well, somebody who's played Fortnite, obviously, but like as an outsider, the whole thing, I, I can commend them on being honest about it. Like how many people do how many it seems like developers wind down on what yeah. they're working on it, but don't say anything. And like the community sees through it. They're like, hey, this isn't happening for them to come out and be like, hey. We're trying to address this. We're not. It hasn't been a success. It hasn't made the money we needed to make for it to be something we can commit to when Fortnite is fucking crushing it. Yeah. Like that's a, that's pretty cool of them to come out and say that, even though it's not the, maybe what, you know, hardcore Paragon players want to hear. Well, they just need to rebalance the economy, make everything a lot more affordable to people. I just like this is something that we've seen in multiple games that employ microtransactions. I just like don't understand why they put the the bar to entry so high. Make your items like 99 cents. Yeah. Like I'll easily, you know, drop a dollar here, a dollar here, a dollar here and before I realize that I've spent $50. Yeah. But if you make like the pack $6 or $10 sure. or even more than that, then I'm like, "Man, I don't want to pay it's seven ninety nine for that, but yeah. I would pay ninety nine cents for that. Yeah, you know, it's it's a psychological trick. Totally, no, totally. When I jump on these online games and I see the packs, like I'm like, oh, no way. I'm not right? going to pay like GTA I mean, shark cards and shit. I'm like, ah, it's too much. This is why Rocket League is selling so many of, of their in-game items because they're like a buck. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like, it's easy to peel off a couple bucks here and there. I don't know. I, I I feel like before they kill it, they should just like drop the prices on all of the in-game items and see if it will help bolster some people to come back and maybe re-explore it. They need to simplify the card and gem system. It's way too complicated right now. And just make it, and, and overall, just make it more approachable to new people. Mm-hmm. But meanwhile, hey, Fortnite's a lot of fun. Fortnite is a lot of I fun. I jumped in. I was playing last night for a little bit. I was. We, Did we, you redeem the code that I gave you? I I, I think so. I forget. We'll have to touch on that off. The- Did you scratch off the code? Well, no, but I think in, I think in the time between when you originally said that and mm-hmm. that, I think I got a code from some from Epic, but I'm okay. not sure. I need to check on that. Well, but if I'm you only- haven't used it, then we should give it away to a best friend or somebody. Okay. Well, I'm only playing on Battle Rail. So, no, you know, you weren't on last night to do anything. I was, uh, the movies ended. I hopped over. I did a couple rounds of Fortnite. And I'll tell you what, after playing so much PUBG with Big Kev Dog to then jump over to Fortnite and be like, holy shit, this game runs so well. <laughs> this is like PUBG if uh, Kevin could see everything. The polish that they've done in Fortnite is is really well done. Yeah. Some of the systems obviously need some work, but they've been making that game for so many years. I mean, 2011, I think, is when they started work on that game. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Okay. It should it should run well. Well, Andrea, fuck Fortnite. I'm excited for <laughs> Spider Man, but Insomniac refuses to tell me when it's coming out. If I wanted to know what was coming to Mom and Grop Digital Shops today, where would I go? You would go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. yeah. What's your problem? Why are you giving me faces over there? Come on, because I played some Fortnite last night? Yeah. You were out at Target. Time. I see where you're at. I see your Instagram stories. I would have gone home. Why don't you want to play Fortnite, Tonight Kevin? you're coming over to eat Portillo's and you're bringing an Xbox and we're playing PUBG next to each other. Should side I brought my Xbox from home, shouldn't I? Yeah, well, you got the one here, don't you? It doesn't have it on it. We'll just inst- we got all afternoon. We'll install it. It'll be fine. <laughs> just download it, Kevin. Of time. <laughs> a lot of people are saying we should order round tables. A lot of people are saying we should order round table pizza mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. Huh. A lot of people? Huh. You mean Cool Greg? So, so many of them. Because the, <laughs> the dads are gone. Like the, yeah. The pe- yeah. Pizza party. Huh. I brought lunch today and we're eating portillas tonight. Why don't we just order round table tomorrow? Why don't we throw a big pizza party tomorrow? What are we going to bet? We could do that again. You guys, like are you really you talking about your pizza party? We got we got new dates to talk about. All right, it's out today. Genital jousting is out of early access and on Steam. World to the West is on Switch. Gintama Rumble is on PlayStation 4. Darkest Dungeon, Dungeon is on Switch. Kirby Battle Royale is on 3DS. Xenoblade Chronicles 2's DLC is out. Ambition of the Slimes is on the Switch. Uh, ACA Neo Geo Power Spikes 2 is on Switch. Double Dragon is on Switch. Arcade Archives. Uh, Cubic is on Switch. Oh, sir, the Hollywood Roast and Oh, sir, the Insult Simulator are on Switch. Link a Picks Color is on 3DS and so is Raining Coins. Uh, new dates for you. Dis- Descenders is coming to Steam on February 9th. Endless Space 2 Vaulter's Expansion is coming out on uh, January 25th. The Fall Part 2 Unbound is coming to Switch. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, February 13th. God of War. The Collector's Edition. Uh, the God of War Collector's Edition called the Stone Mason Edition is up on GameStop right now. Still no release date, but it says statue. It has statue carvings, all this other stuff for like 150. Uh, Life is Strange Before the Storms Farewell episode is coming out March 6th in the US, March 9th in PAL territories on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PC, and they announced three versions of the game that are coming in physical form. You got your regular edition, you got your limited edition that then has the art book, a CD uh, track list, all, or CD track and stuff like that. Then over on Square Enix's store, you have the vinyl edition, which has all the stuff from the limited edition, plus a vinyl record from the game over there. So that's cool. And then Age of Empires Definitive Edition comes out PC, on PC February 20th. Now, we talked about God of War Collector's Edition a second ago. I'd like to kick it over to Stiggles. Stiggles wrote in the kind of funny.com slash KFGD and says, Hey, you guys <laughs> and maybe gal Stiggles here with an interesting tidbit that I found the God of War collector's edition was announced today and can be pre-ordered at GameStop and Amazon. I missed that. Thank you. Leading me to believe that there will be, we will hopefully hear a release date soon as I'm waiting for the God of War stone Mason edition to go up for pre-order on Best Buy gamers club unlocked unlocked plug. The only place that gives you 20% off collector's editions too. And for this one, that's a meaty $30. I noticed that Best Buy has a listing for a foam axe modeled after Kratos's from the new game. It's $50. But what was interesting is the supposed release date of February 18th, 2018. It's a Sunday. So I doubt it's the date for the game, but one may speculate that merch for a game wouldn't come out two months before the actual game. Could we get a release date for the end of February? Would the name recognition alone be enough for this to do well in such a quick turnaround after a release date reveal? If it indeed comes out next month, that Super Bowl ad theory would certainly seem credible if Sony is trying to blast out some messaging for all to see. Thoughts? Keep up the stellar podcasts. Stiggles. Stiggles. I like that you're excited about this. I don't think I can speculate again about God of War's release date. We've speculated about this <laughs> stupid release date for like the last three months. I'm still saying March. I still th- And I think the Super Bowl thing's cool, but I doubt it's it never coming out. It's done. They've it's canceled not, it. Oh my God, they've canceled it? <laughs> They're just releasing the Axe and Collector's Edition. That's no right. game now. <laughs> it is interesting, February 18th for a foam axe, but who knows what's going to happen. We'll see, Stiggles. Uh, keeping going, we got some rumors for you. Gamatsu has a rumor that says various European GameStop stores, Sweden, Finland, Norway, and Denmark, have listed PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions of Red Faction Guerrilla 
Red Faction Guerrilla was first launched on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 in June 2009, followed by a PC release that September. So possible you're getting some kind of remaster or re-release of Red Faction Guerrilla. Then GameSpot has a rumor. According to reports from Comic Book and Eurogamer, Eurogamer, comma, series developer TT Games is working on Lego games based on the Pixar's The Incredibles. All right, whatever. And another one focusing on DC Comics villains. Fuck yes. Did you just say Fuck whatever yes. to The Incredibles? Yeah, because I knew the DC part was coming up. DC Comics villain, another DC one. This is why it's good to be us, because you get the Marvel one year, you get the DC the next year. Woo-wee. Can't wait. It's got to be true. They got, it's time for a DC one. It's t- you know, we had the Marvels, now it's back. You excited, Kev? We were, in the game. we were in the Marvel game, remember that? That was fun. Yeah, the Incredibles one will be cool too, don't get me wrong. I'll play that too. I like the Incredibles quite a bit. Probably my favorite Pixar film. Really? Yeah. It's a very good film. Yeah. What's your favorite Pixar film? Oh my gosh, putting me on the spot. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Toy Story 3? Yeah. Okay, fair, fair. Woo! God of Steel writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, more of a you're wrong as I wasn't able to watch live, but I noticed a huge omission in yesterday's show, specifically in the dates and releases section. Blizzard announced that the long-awaited Blizzard World map for Overwatch would be going live on January 23rd. That's all, guys. Just wanted to ensure this announcement got the attention it deserves. The map sounds really cool. Thank you, God of Steel. Do you not agree? You don't think the map sounds cool? No, I think the map sounds fine. We just generally do not do a new date for a single map in a game. We would be talking about maps every day then. Sure. There's just too much, too many updates to these ongoing game serv- games of services. Okay, fair. But we got it. Deals of the day for you. Major <laughs> Nelson's telling everybody that Xbox Live Gold members can get a digital copy of NBA Live 18, the one edition, for just $7.50. So go get that one, man. That's a really good deal. <laughs> yeah, but NBA Live, man, they can't buy a break, huh? They're giving the game away now. All right, go get them. Well, hopefully y'all learned your lessons. Yeah. Time to check in with the readers. Remember, you can be part of the show, kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Remember, it today, reader mail is brought to you by patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Seriously, just give us a fucking dollar. The party mode's really good. I summon Satan in it, and I ain't joking. I ain't saying it because Kevin's paying me to. Where do I want to go, though, Andrea? You know what I mean? Hmm. Hmm. Let's start with Keylock. Okay. So y'all talked about the Fable rumor, but honestly, it scares me. They tried reviving things like Phantom Dust, and it's dead now. Scalebound has also died, and several other first-party Xbox games just seem to die or get pushed back into who knows when. Cough, crack down three, cough. So should we just get? So should we just be cautious, not get excited, and just sit and wait? I fear hyping this up will lead to a disappointment, or worse yet, another cancelization. Yes. You should always be cautious. Your, yes. Yeah. Set the bar low for yourself so you can be excited. Yeah. When it turns out to be cool. Um, it was interesting hearing this news story. Well, I mean, it's technically not news, right? It's still a rumor. Still a rumor, yeah, from Eurogamer yesterday. Um, that a studio, a completely different studio is going to be resurrecting a very well-known franchise. I mean, I don't know. It, it's weird. It's a weird rumor. I don't doubt that it, it could potentially have some merit, but I don't know why Microsoft would kill it and then bring it back with a different studio. Wouldn't it just be to get... An- have it be fresh to restart the IP, right? Like, I feel like Fable lost its luster as it went on longer. I feel like every talks about Fable 1, Fable 2, but it kind of just petered out there at the end. Yes and no. I would I would love to know if you could think of a, a precedence for this, if this has been done before, and kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, someone if you take, guys can think of so one. So someone but, taking an established IP, new studio a, taking a, over? Right, so something that's been canceled. Yeah. And not, and not from a studio that's gone bankrupt like THQ, right? Help me out, what happened? But I mean, like, uh, uh, somebody who owns the IP intentionally canceling it and then waiting a while and then bringing it back with a completely di- different studio. Here's where I don't, I don't know if this fits the bill exactly, but what about Red Dead? The original Red Dead Revolver was who? And then Red Dead Redemption is Rockstar and everything else. But I forget how they got that IP and how that all happened. You know what I'm talking about? No. Go, f- give me a Wikipedia search on Red Dead Revolver and who did that one. Because I and I don't even know who published it. If it was two K, Andrea's on it. Don't worry. Rockstar San Diego made it. Red Dead Revolver. It says Rockstar San Diego and Capcom. Okay. Okay. Publishers: Rockstar Games and Capcom. Okay. Then that doesn't fit at all. 
Really? I thought somebody else did Red Dead Revolver. No, I, Red I was, Dead. that's why I was like... I apologize. Mm. I was totally mistaken on that. I guess it, just, yeah. it must be the fact that they dropped Capcom from it, is what I'm thinking of. Okay, okay. Yeah, kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Let us know. I don't know if there's a precedence for this. Um, not to say that Microsoft wouldn't do this, because clearly, like you guys mentioned yesterday, like they need something in this space. Sure. Um, they don't have a lot of you know great single-player RPG experiences happening exclusively on their console. Um, Max Payne. I don't know why I'm stuck just in Rockstar now. Who did the know. original Max Payne? Oh, no, Remedy did. Remedy did Max Payne, and then Max Payne 1 and 2, and Max Payne 3 was Rockstar. But did Remedy cancel Max Payne? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. No, That's what I'm talking about I is know. like, it would be like if Rockstar canceled Grand Theft Auto, because they're like, it just isn't doing very well. Sure. This is a, obviously a very hypothetical <laughs> situation. And they're this like, is a different universe. They're like, listen, it's just not doing well. And then they... Um, they let it go. And then like three years later, Rockstar hired a completely outside studio. Let's say, so, let's say they're like, Hey, Insomniac, we want you to bring Rockstar. We want you to bring GTA back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Like that's weird. It's weird. It, the thing about it for me is that I, I don't see it so much as an IP thing. I don't think Lionhead was closed because they were bored with Fable. I think it was Lionhead got closed because Fable Legends was off track and it wasn't what Microsoft wanted and they read this they read the tea leaves on what the actual consumer was going to want and this wasn't Fable anymore. Maybe not too dissimilar to Visceral and the Star Wars game they were working on. Right. And so it was it was more like cool Lionhead you're not doing what we want here. This isn't on the track the way it should be. The game before this we weren't super happy with. You've had a lot of shots at Fable we don't really believe in your vision anymore. You don't have a vision, blah, 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 whatever they say, whatever mm -hmm. personal politics are there. They closed down that. And it wasn't that we're closing on fable. It's so much as like, we're just done with them. And then it is, we need new IP, but you know, getting a new IP out there and having it sell juggernauts really, really tough. We still have the fable name. These guys show up and they're like, Hey, we have an idea for a fable. All right, do it. And you kind of get the best of both worlds. Cause it is going to be, it's a fable that's familiar in terms of what you, when you hear what a, a fable game is, we, assume you know what it's going to be like but if we're jumping in there and it is from the ground up brand new that's exciting but it is still something that's familiar if that yeah makes sense. i don't know maybe they'll do like a prey and just completely reboot it and have it do nothing nothing to do with the original get bethesda over there they know how to do that pretty well austin t wrote in to kind of funny.com slash kfgd and says greg and co-host i am genuinely curious why more people are not invested in playstation now we just got hit by a bunch of snow here in North Carolina, and with a lack of newer games out at the moment and the inability to leave my house safely, I decided to fire up PlayStation Now and dive in with my trial. Now I run an Ethernet connection for my PlayStation 4 and my PC, which is probably what makes this experience smooth, but my god! I've been playing the Sly HD Trilogy, and I'm close to platinuming Sly 2. I've been able to stream some Gravity Rush Remastered now that the PlayStation 4 games are continually being added to the service, and all of it has been smooth, enjoyable, and satisfying. All while bouncing between my living room PS4 and my PC in the other room. I even plan on running through Red Dead Redemption in the future before Red Dead 2 arrives, and I am certainly inclined to keep my subscription going. So do you think people are still sleeping on PlayStation now? Do you think the price point is still what people, why people are holding off? And if so, what could Sony do to bring more people in? Sorry for the long question. Love what y'all do and keep up the phenomenal work. P.S. Greg, I'm planning on blasting through Patapon's Platinum next. Wish me luck. Good luck, Austin T. Andrew, why don't more people care about PlayStation now? Probably because they don't want to stream their games and you have to have, you know, a really consistent internet connection for it to work as mm -hmm. falsely as it's intended to. Yeah. That's one, one issue. Yeah. Um, I also think that if you're going to be paying a subscription that you probably want access to more than what's in their library. Sure. Maybe you want to do like a red box or a game fly or something where you have access to multiple types of games instead of just what's in the PlayStation now library. Um, I personally don't want to spend that much of my time going back and playing old games. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to go play an old game, I'll pick it out of a used game bin in one of the stores that sells them, or I'll look for a, a sale in one of the marketplaces. But I don't know. I, I just don't need this subscription service in my life. There's too many new games to play. I think it's a, it, there's a myriad of reasons uh, and problems for this one. And I would, I mean, from the f first uh, jump, I think it's the fact that first impressions mattered 
And when this originally dropped and we all started using it, it was like, oof. It was a hot mess. There's a lot of lag here. And, yeah. uh, and so people kind of wrote it off. And it was that thing of like, yep, Gaikai wasn't the greatest investment. Still doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It's still not as perfect. There's always going to be latency. Da, 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 da. So the fact that you're having great experiences now, Austin, is awesome. And it means that it's come around. But the industry moves on to the next hotness, right? We're always, we're, what's going on with Monster Hunter? When's the impatient dropping? What about Shadow? Like, you're always worried about what's coming forward and that's what gets the most juice and the most press and not going backwards, really. And then I think that Xbox Games Pass mm -hmm. makes more sense in the fact that, cool, you download the game and then you don't have to worry about streaming issues or connectivity or if there's gonna be latency. And even though you're saying it works now great, and I'm sure it does, for me, it would still be if it was going to be, am I going to play an old game on a streaming service or an old game and download it? I would go with Games Pass. And I think their pricing structure, and again, now we're totally talking about a kind of funny, you're wrong territory or first impressions. I haven't paid enough attention to what a subscription or a game by game cost is on PlayStation now. Now. I don't know what their new pricing model is. And so I know that X, uh, when Xbox Games Pass, it was like, oh man, that's a great deal. And that sounds like a lot of, that sounds like if I was in the mood for it, that would be a great way to play through older games or play things that I just missed. True. Well, you can get a free seven day trial for PlayStation now, but let's take a look at some games and look at like what some prices are. Maybe Go ahead and do it. Andrew, get in there. What's uh, happening? I'm, I'm going to look. Is there a specific game you would like me to look up? Let me know what, what's Red Dead Redemption running me. Let's take a look. Okay. Red Dead Redemption. Oh, it's listed here, but there's no price. Well, well, isn't it like, isn't it a flat structure? I thought, isn't it like in the old days, what it was like per game, 10 bucks. And then there was like an unlimited thing for 30. I don't even remember anymore. I know. I thought it was a, I, I don't, I didn't think there was a, a flat fee that you could get you everything, but I'm looking now. Okay. Okay. Um, what is PlayStation now? <laughs> 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 let's, let's go to the wikipedia page oh you get the first month for 9.99 right, right okay okay that's where i'm getting hung up on the 9.99 business i'm looking for like how much does it cost and it's not on there it's not on the playstation now website that's weird well, why would they why would they not because they don't want you to think why about would the they money. not do that they don't want you to think about the game <laughs> Yeah, see, so a one month of interaction offers get you for nine ninety nine. A twelve month subscription oh, here is a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks for a twelve month subscription. So that's what, like eight bucks a month, roughly. Sure, that's, that's good. That's actually math. not bad. No, but still streaming, and I. It, but I'm. I mean, I'm. You and me are not the people for this. No, because I am. We. I am very much like. Oh man, I. I saw when Psychonauts two got delayed to twenty nineteen, and we were talking about that in this show. I was like, man, I still have never played the original Psychonauts. So I went home and I bought it for like two bucks and downloaded it, and now it's sitting there yeah. as a PlayStation New Classic. I'm way more inclined to do that than I am to get out there and do that. I think the reason why we were so like against PlayStation now, in addition to all the reasons that you were talking about, was that the game library for a long time was just very lacking in newer titles. Everything they were releasing was was old or it was like these really small titles. Yeah. So you'd play a game for like a couple of hours and then you were done. And the wait time between when a AAA game was released and when it was added to PlayStation Now was substantial enough that, like you said, like it, you could just buy it for less. Yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe it's time to take a look at it again. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Andrea and I are hosting the show again tomorrow. Write in kindoffunny.com slash KFGD, either why you use PlayStation now or why you don't. And if you had an experience with it or if you just don't care. Or if you oh, use yeah. Xbox Game Pass. Thank you very much. And um, how you like that service. And if you feel like it's a good investment of your time and your money. And, you know, we'll we'll talk about it. I just noticed this necklace. What is this necklace? Um, it's an eyeball and, a, and some, some kisses. And some, some lips. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Time to squat up. <laughs> this is where one of you writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD, giving me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and play with you, and everybody has a good old time. Today, Mike needs help on Xbox One. His Xbox Live name, Mcraft, K-R-A-F-T, 20. So just two zero. Mcraft, 20. I don't really play games online, but it never hurts to have friends. Am I right? You're right, Mike. <laughs> Everybody go friend <laughs> Mcraft20 to pad out your best friend list and see what he's up to over there. What's he actually playing, doing his thing? Andrea. Yes. If people are watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, they are tasked with one mission going to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong, telling us what we screwed up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening later on podcast services around the globe. What do we screw up today? Um, awesome Asik, uh, says 
There will be replacements for Nintendo Labo products. There are some misconceptions that they will be giving out for free. This has not been confirmed yet. Nintendo will also be putting up the templates for free so people can make Uh. everything from scratch using their own supplies. Uh. Edit. A best friend below corrected me saying Nintendo won't be supplying replacements. (laughs) But in the IGN France article, it says they won't be supplying free replacements. So it seems like there will be paid replacements, okay. but a gray area right now. Okay. So we'll, we'll I guess we'll that. just have to wait for more information. Um, all right. Um, this is more about um, Nintendo Labo. Labo! Okay. Sounds like Gabo from Simpsons, you know? Okay. Gabo, Gabo, Gabo. That's a pretty good <laughs> Batman signal. I probably have to color it in for you to see it, but I'm pretty proud of that one. Because I do a lot of... Yeah, me too. When are you getting the switcher back, Kev? It's getting mailed to us now. Okay, great. Um, Charles J. brought up um, a correction in the sense that you missed some news. Another executive is leaving Sony. Adam Boyce's replacement, Florian Hunziker. Oh. Um, VentureBeat has the story. And Eric Hirschberg is leaving Activision Publishing oh, wow. in March, which I did not hear about. That makes me sad. Yeah, he's been there forever. Yeah. Wow. I like his stage presentations. Okay. Um. All right. What do we have here? Hmm. Oh, yeah, PD0000 says, I think you both refer to the publisher of the Alien game as Foxnet. It's actually Fox Next. We actually talked about how we mispronounced it later in that story. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a dummy. It's just me. <laughs> just me, everybody. I'm a dummy. Um, so... Lo Yui says, hey, Greg and Andrew, I just want to add that Nintendo is not only the fastest selling console in the U.S. during its first 10 months, it has also outsold the PS4 in Japan three to one when comparing to the PS4's first Mm, full mm. year after release to the Switches. <clears throat> to be clear, I feel I feel at times Andrea does not want Nintendo to receive the credit it deserves. She often tries to remind Nintendo fans to keep their expectations low, as if almost depriving them of any joy. I, as I see it, Nintendo fans had plenty to be frustrated and sad about before the Switch. This past year, Nintendo had two of the best games and won numerous awards and admiration. That's true. On top of that, their business is stable and healthy again. Their business, for the record, was never not healthy. Nintendo has been rich AF for a very long sure, time. Sure, they're rich as fuck, but like for the record, they weren't. They were taking a bath in the video. <laughs> I also believe they're one of the only video game companies attempting to be creative. Okay, all right, now you're a, getting right, editorial. Right, now, you're, now you're just starting to start some shit. Hey, I agree that it's um, important to to bring the numbers up. So yeah, I already said Nintendo's kicking ass. We okay. talked before about the Here's PlayStation the- Four or, X, or uh, Switch compared to PS Four yes. Year One. And this is strictly about NPD uh, US numbers. In in 2017. And also, for the record. And you hate Greg, Nintendo. No. Greg, maybe you, maybe you understand this. Sure. If I say Nintendo is doing awesome, then I'm automatically a, a Tim fanboy. If I say Nintendo is doing crappy, then I fucking hate Nintendo. There's sure. no winning for me. I no. either hate Nintendo or I'm a fanboy. So, And regardless cool. of all that. Cool story. You don't really play games because you're right. a girl. So Fake gamer that? girl. <laughs> But no, I like I liked before he started editorializing. I liked how he was describing you though, because yeah. I I could just picture you with a glass of wine, <laughs> like you're just talking shit about it and stuff. <laughs> what do we got over there, Kevin? Giant box, huh? They're switching. Oh, the switcher came literally when I said, "Where's the switcher?" The doorbell rang, and it was the switcher. Don't okay. get don't get wrapped up in that. We got to finish the show, Kevin. Zyger says regarding the flannel death's name, Andrea said it right. Greg said it wrong. It's Mara. Mara. Sort of like Mar. Uh. Got it. Again, I went to school with a girl. Who, I won't say her first name, but it, Mara is how you pronounce it there. Right. So now I've always got to remember that girl was wrong. Mara. Yes. Got it. Greg, if it helps, it's pronounced the same way as the Mara from the Shin Megami Tensei series. That does not help me, Zyger. Also, hi, Andrea. Hi, Zyger. Um, okay. Do-do. Oh, yes. And talking about executive news, uh, Microsoft has also announced that Matt Booty, the former head of Booty. Minecraft, is now in the new role at Microsoft Studios, where he will report directly to Phil. To Phil Spencer. Dun, 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 dun. Um, this is more NPD numbers we already talked about. Um, if the rest of the top 10 popped, we'll save it for tomorrow. <laughs> 
<laughs> Zyger also says, yes, Kevin, I agree with you. Everyone should order round table. <laughs> Zyger's in. <laughs> Um, oh, Shredberg says, you said the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 update is out. Unfortunately, the update is not out. It's scheduled to be out today in Japan and will likely be out when the eShop updates there at 9 a.m., which is 4 p.m. Pacific time here. Okay. Well, Kevin's I, I giggling think, like think, a schoolgirl over fine. there. It's going to be fine. That's close enough. Destroyed our, our boss. Not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Shredberg wrote in and highlighted the Nintendo comment and said, ignore this, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. It got ahead of got ahead of you in the feed. Um, <laughs> I'm not legend. So the show is called Kind of Funny Games Daily, not Kind of Funny Lunch Daily. Please tell Kevin to focus. <laughs> hey man, we opened the door. We had to figure it out. Um, apparently, according to Opti CounterCon, IGN has a special edition of God of War listed with a June 30th release date. Oh, that's what, yeah, that's what IGN listed? Yeah, that's the end of the first half of the year. Sean Layden, that's how that works. Sean Layden said it would be out in the first half of the year. IGN has to put something there. That's the date they picked. It's similar to when a retailer will put an unannounced game that's coming in 2018 and put December 31st, 2018. They don't have to put something there. They could just put TBD. Yeah, but I. But again, it's back in, and, and granted, my information's out of date, but it was like how our back-end system worked, that you needed to put some value in there if mm. memory serves. Um, Wolf J4 says Rockstar brought Red Dead Revolver from Capcom after Capcom scrapped it. From Wiki, originally developed by Capcom, borrowing elements from their 1985 title Gunsmoke, the project was scrapped in 2002. Subsequently, Rockstar Games purchased the game and expanded on it. Changing the feel from that of an American Western to a spaghetti Western allowed the developers to add more blood and over the top characters. That's interesting. However, not quite yeah, not exactly what, you're what I'm about. looking for. Um,. Hold on, we gotta go to page two, everybody. B -b -b page two. This yeah, is more right. about Max Payne. Um, also, uh, not the same type of example as I was looking for. Basically, what I'm looking for is an IP holder who scraps it and then brings their own IP back with somebody else. Right, right, right. Because that's the situation we're potentially talking about It'd be here. like right if now, these rumors PlayStation took Warhawk and gave Warhawk to somebody else. And that's not even a great example either. I guess Twisted Metal and David, nobody from the original teams were in, in, involved. Right. That would be a good example. Has not happened though. Um, let's see. Well, this, no. K-Bob's, this is not, a a, Spider-Man is not a good example either because... No. Sony didn't previously own the Spider-Man IP. I mean, Sly got given to Sanzaru, right? Like, that's similar, but it was like, it wasn't, they didn't close down Sucker Punch. It's a weird example. I know what you're, I yeah. know, it's, it's you're looking for a very specific thing. I was hoping there was a precedence for it, but it's very possible that this is the first time this has ever happened. Mm -hmm. um, I can't believe it. There's some, there's got to be some weird PC thing that's out there. Um, Charles J says an example would be Legacy of Kane. It okay. was eventually revived as an online game, but I don't know again if that was. Hmm, I would need to. I would need to dig into this gap More thread, which I don't have time for. Game titles. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. These are a bunch of people trying to make examples for me, which I appreciate. Um, this might be something actually that might kind of fit here. J.S. Collins says, so not 100% what Andrew is talking about, but has a history of taking IPs away from a studio that's created and forming a new studio is Halo. Um, so obviously Bungie, the original creator, now under 343. Gears went from Epic to the Coalition. Mm. But, but neither of those studios are shut down. We closed your studio and we're taking your IP and giving it to these people later on. Right. Yeah. So neither of those studios are shut down. They're working on other stuff. Hmm. 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 Um, Amazon, according to Christian's notes, has the book, The Art of God of War, with a release date for March 15th. Mm, okay. Interesting. Um, Vin Zombie says Xbox Game Pass is free for the first 14 days and $19.99 a month after the trial versus seven days for PS Now. Gotcha. Um... <laughs> which is nineteen ninety nine a month, or as we said, ninety nine ninety nine a year. All right, more about PlayStation now. Um, no, no, Zyger, your example about Red Rainbow Six does not work because Ubisoft has always owned that. 
Mm, but nice try. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, there's a here's a lot there's a lot of examples here that don't quite fit. So <laughs> Goron King forty two said thirteen is definitely when kids get into weed. Thank you, thank you. I thought so. That's, that that felt like a good weed age. <laughs> Kevin, you're an old man now. You don't know what it's like to be a kid out there anymore. I still hang out with the kids. I know what's up. And that and that's it. Where do you think they're getting all this weed from? If you didn't know, <laughs> this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. You can watch it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. You can watch it later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. And you can listen to it on podcast services around the globe. No matter where you get the show, thank you so much for supporting it. Consider going over to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, kicking us a buck, getting that new party mode, having a good time. Andrew, you're back tomorrow. That's right. And doing double shift. You and Joey for the morning show. Yep. Do I need to bring champagne or anything? Yes. The show? Okay, okay. Champagne and uh, the orange juice? That's right. All right. Are we morning out, are we mimosas. I got my fresh oranges from my tree. So do we need? Do I need to juice them now too? Um, We could probably just squeeze them. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you have then, like a juicer? No. God. Well, Kevin might, I think. I don't know. No, I do not. No, he doesn't. Strong. Yeah, he's strong. Yeah, yeah. He'll just have a bowl and just squeeze, squeeze them up. right here. Just right here. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. It's been our pleasure to serve you.